And so, 2019 has reached the end of its chapter. So I thought I'd reflect a bit on what's happened in the past 12 months. Let's just say things have been interesting. Well, initially I had started this channel as a means to review lesser-known or outside-the-box tabletop RPGs. I feel like 2019 was the year that I started to come into my own as a producer of content on YouTube and otherwise. Now, yeah, it was in late May that I started Monastery Live. And the sole reason I did that, of course, was I was having way too much fun on other people's podcasts, so I decided to start my own. In that time, I've had a lot of people come, a few people go for re for reasons that are understandable. But because of how much fun I was having, I decided, you know what, maybe I'll try again at the whole game streaming thing. And I decided to do simulcasting with that because doing it on t just Twitch was very, very draining. It was a very cold environment, there was not a whole lot of interactivity. And I would watch other Twitch streams, and I, and I would be like, I don't really care for this kind of one-sided conversation. And in the process of that, I remember watching John Wick, and the whole notion of the Continental as this universal neutral ground, where you weren't allowed to do any business, you were, ju you were just there as kind of a safe haven with the gold coins being the currency of the place. I, looking at that, I decided to use that as the kind of basis for how I was going to set up the place that I would call the monastery. Because originally, I just had a small, gr a small um, group where we would exchange Discord messages until I decided, you know what? We need to expand, let's make this into a server. And so I did, so I did just that. While the server's not especially huge, it's the right size for somebody like me. Because I never, I never want to be that kind of person who has a very distant attitude towards the people who watch his content, whether that be five or five hundred people who are watching. The way I see it, I, I go with myself the monk and I call people good brothers and good sisters to make it clear that I'm not on any higher level than anyone else. I'd say the real test of how far I was going to take my integrity was when all of the news and all of the tr all of the tribal lines started to get drawn with the Vic Mignana stuff. When I started seeing how people were reacting and started seeing the sides being drawn and started seeing the tribes being formed. And I said, you know what? I cannot stand dealing with politics when I'm off the clock. So for those of you who don't know, at my particular job, I have five different news channels on in the background all day, every day. BBC, Bloomberg, Fox, MSNBC, and CNN. All the time. And because of some of the political inclinations of some of those news channels, I have to hear about the political crap constantly. And if it's not from them, it's going to be from my coworkers. And some of those coworkers can be a bit chatty. So when you hear, when you're inundated with that in the background, it's the reason I have to wear these giant headphones whenever I'm working. You're less inclined to have that in your in your off the job scenarios. It's kind of like the old saying, never discuss politics or religion at the dinner table. And then I remember Hair, I remember Hairball outright, sta outright stating that com that coming onto the show and, ha and having fun do with the game streams was a good escape for him. And, then I real and that was when I realized I am developing a particular niche of this is a escape for people. And because of that, I have to take that much, much more seriously. And so I did. That is the reason why I've held the neutrality attitude that I have, or the oh, the open bar and all that kind of stuff. Now, putting aside the fact that I love me some drinking songs, I love me some folk metal, 
And I lo- and I love the good I love the good old tavern. I um I I grew up next to this um Irish pub called O'Gara's, which if you're a Peanuts fan is a bit of a deep lore for you guys. <laughs> but I like those kind of places. I um I always loved going to watch the worst Irish tenor contests. I loved um jukebox bombing various bars. That's always a good pastime. But the point is I want the monastery to have been, and continue to be, a place where anybody, no matter what their background, no matter what their political affiliation, no matter what their age, gender, religion, what have you, can come in and have a good time. Do we get it a bit spicy? Oh, definitely. It's it's a no-holds-barred kind of place. But even though it would be tempting, I don't consider myself a shock jock. The way I've always seen the monastery is that this is a place that is unfiltered. This is the way you would talk with your with your friends at the uh, bar when it's halfway in and and every and all the filters and all the niceties are just completely dropped. The all those niceties that's for outside the place. When you're when you're in here, you drop you drop all that. You hang your coat up on the wall and you ha- and you come in and you have a drink. And that's the kind of that's the kind of place I want I want to set up because I've I've always seemed to had a have a talent for bringing people together using games, and the way I see it, the monastery is just another example of that. Now that being said, like I said, I do think that this year has been the year where I've been able to come into my own as an internet personality. And I, I, I say that when it sounds so highfalutin, when I'm, I'm only less than 500 subs. So it's not like I'm some big deal or something. And I don't even know how I'd handle being a big deal anyways. But that small patch of land that I, that I have, I do take um, seriously. It's I'm kind of remembered, reminded of Shigeru um, Otori when he talked about the fife as a farm. Which, incidentally, if you haven't read Tales of the Otori, go do that. It's a really good set of books. In that regard, the monastery is my fiefdom, but I don't consider myself some emperor or king over how things work. Again, I'm no better than anybody else there. That being that being said, over the last 12 months, I've had a lot of time to reflect, especially with some misfortunes that have hit that have hit me, and I've had a lot of time to kind of examine how I, how I want to approach things. And I was reminded of something that SF Debris had, had said most recently. That willpower is a finite resource. There was a study on this not too long ago. And the only way that that refills is by doing something for someone else. That is the reason why I never want to take anybody who watches my shows, whether it be Monastery Gaming, Monastery Live, or the Monastery Special Interviews. I never want to take any of that for granted, because it's only thanks to the people who have propped me up, especially even when I arguably didn't deserve it, who have gotten me to this point. And I hope, and I hope to continue going on the path that they've helped lay out for me. So, in that regard, whether you're watching me on YouTube, on Bit, on BitChute, whether you're watching me stream on Twitch or on DLive or on, or on Facebook, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You're the reason I'm able to keep doing this, and I absolutely love being this kind of entertainer. I, I, I love, I love sharing these sto- these stories in in the temple. I love sharing the kind of the kind of games that I'm able to share. And I had stated from the outset that I never want to be that kind of e famous. Like I appreciate every bit of um every bit of viewership and and the like that I can get. But my whole goal is that I I want somebody to look at 
one of the th- one of the things that I've covered, whether it be in a review on a stream or what have you, and if they end up getting that game or if they end up getting a new perspective based on how things were discussed, then I feel that I've done my job. It's in pursuit of that that I ended up extending my hand to do the um, interview thing in the last few months. Since I hope that by doing that, that um, I'm able to help out other people with their projects. Stuff, stuff like low fantasy gaming, against the Dark Master, Titan Effect, all that kind of stuff. And I do have more interviews slated for, 20, for 2020. That being, that being said, the goal will always be to be a showcase. And moreover, I've started to develop a kind of niche when it comes to the style that I do for my interviews. Because I'll have a few bullet points, but I don't have a specific format. It I try and have it as the interview for people who don't like interviews. The main inspiration being stuff like carpool or comedians in cars getting coffee or even hot ones. That sort of informal style is the approach that I ended up taking. And those have been fun, and again, I will continue to do those. I'm sorry for a bit of repetition, but I'm going kind of off the cuff with this. But I want to make clear that I would not even have the chance to do those interviews if it weren't for the support of everyone watching. Now, I only live in the moment, so I have no idea what's going to happen in 2020. And I'm not the best person, I will freely admit that. I can be kind of a jerk sometimes. (laughs) But I'm going to try and do my best to make the Monastery the best show that I can make it. Because I want to get more interviews, I want to be able to do more shows, and I want to be able to get more people on from both the, from both the people who are regular viewers as well as expand. And to try and make this show that I was given a second chance to by a, by a certain woman in California to be the best show that I can possibly make it. So as always, my name is Milja, I am your Gaming Monk, stay frosty everybody.